All right. So we are here. Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, I mean, it's always nice. We've had you a couple. I think we had you earlier this month, too. Yeah, it's always great to be on here. <clears throat> Eddie and I did an industry update, I believe the end of last month was the last time I was on here. So it's great yeah. to uh, kind of share the vision of what we've got going on at Node School and Colonial Funding Group. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's fun. You guys do a great job with this Node School TV. When I'm not on, I do catch it at 11.05. Um, so uh I got to see how our no direct sponsorship is doing. So it's great. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, I just want to make a quick clarification before we go too far. There was uh, some some chat comments made about the link, and I want to verify what the email Please. address is. Okay. It is it is ABLP, Asset Based Lending Program at colonialfunding.com. So exactly. if you're actually colonialfundinggroup.com. <laughs> Let's see how many times we can change it. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get that fixed and we'll, we'll put that up here on the uh, on the screen. We'll leave it up for a minute so that everybody can see it. And we'll make sure we got a corrected uh, thing <laughs> in the in the comments. Um, you know, as I'm kind of looking through some of these questions and uh, it's there obviously it's great to see, you know, all of our friends, as always. Uh, I see John from Alabama and. Um, people have been chiming in, including Peggy from Colorado. And I've got uh, some friends up in Bend, Oregon myself. So uh, Vonda, this is, I'm really glad you're here. Um, I, as I'm kind of really looking through this, a couple of things, I was trying to take notes as you guys were talking as fast as I possibly could. But one of the things that stood out to me is when I talk to a newer investor who's considering the note business, they like the idea of potentially raising money. And I've even had people tell me like, I understand you can raise private money, but I think I'm allergic to private investors, right? And and then so what we do is we say, look, you cut, you can come to Note School. We'll teach you how to do this. It's not near as complicated as you would imagine, and more importantly, you can raise longer term money for lower interest rates. And we really help them on that journey, of course, right? But one of the things about this program that you're offering is. If you are somebody who is allergic or afraid of private investors, maybe you 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 have this limiting belief because that's all it is. It's a limiting belief that you have that you can't do something, um, and education will hap, uh, help that. But if that is you and you're trying to figure out how this could help, this is the solution you're probably looking for. If you're acquiring notes and you don't know anybody with money, that's what you believe. Well, listen, here's a great opportunity to get plugged in uh, really to a whole network of people. And, you know, Bob and the team, they'll be able to uh, evaluate what you got and be able to lend against your assets. And so hopefully this is one less roadblock on your journey to wealth, if that's something uh, that you're afraid of. And I, I think it's not just that, it's people forget how difficult it can be to work with the banks and Eddie, I know while we had this conversation last year when you said, hey, Brian, you can go raise this money at five or 6%. And I said, Eddie, I'll just go to the bank and I'll borrow all the money I can at 4%. Like, what? why wouldn't I do that? And what did you tell me? <laughs> yeah, I said, you're going to have a hard time communicating with the bank because this is a very unique business and they're going to like you, but they're not going to be able to explain their business to their boss. Yeah. The other thing that you, you mentioned that for some reason really stuck out to me uh, is we teach a lot about, you know, creating our own terms, right? When we're buying houses on terms, if you've been watching the show for a while, you know, this is a topic we discuss. And Eddie was very adamant early on of you're not going to get terms that are near as favorable as working with somebody who understands this business. And that's, you know, it's an intangible we forget about a lot. Yeah. And Brian, to your point, I mean, th this program could be a stepping stone, mm -hmm. Right. I mean, while you're taking going from inexperience, raising private capital and learning more about it, this fills in that gap where you can go ahead and recapitalize your business. And then you take out that loan by raising lower cost private capital down the road, which may take you a year, 18 months, 24 months down the road. But instead of waiting that learning curve of raising private capital, you can go ahead and pledge your collateral now and take out a loan against your uh, note portfolio. And Bob, talk about just a second what I'd mentioned earlier. So you're not giving up if you've got a ten thousand dollar monthly payment, you know, on your loans that you're pledging coming in. You're not giving up a hundred percent of that ten thousand dollar month a month, right? You're, right? you're giving up a percentage of that. Yeah, I mean, we're typically going to loan up to about fifty five percent of that monthly cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. One, it, it gives the note investor a significant cushion there. 
right? right? And then from a lender standpoint, from underwriting guidelines, we know that you have $10,000 coming in, the first 5,500 comes to pay your debt service and the rest you maintain. And then as you buy new notes, that's just increasing that 10,000 overall anyway. Um, and you're not gonna borrow all against all your portfolio. In other words, you pledge a million dollars, right? You're not gonna borrow a million dollars. It's not a one for one, it's kind of like an LTV. Right. There's going to be a loan to value. So that may be capped off at 50, 60, 65, depending on how long the notes are seasoned, how their performance is and so forth. So it's it's the same kind of concept in due diligence. Right. LTV. What is your collateral? How is it performing? You know, the same kind of thing when you make a loan. Um, so it, it's not, as we say, brain surgery. Uh, it's just applying what we typically do in our business in a little bit different way so people can take advantage of the capital opportunity we have to lend them to recapitalize their business. Correct. Absolutely. You know, and, I, and I wanted to ask too, Bob, so let's say that somebody has a loan portfolio, like, okay, well, they have a loan portfolio where they've sold what? What kind of property do they sell in owner finance? What could that be? Well, Eddie, it could be a lot of different things. We don't have any particulars. We we lend against land, or as you would say, dirt portfolios, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody who just cut up a piece of land, seller financed it, 15 tracts of land they have notes against and they want to borrow money against that, we can do that. It could be commercial property. It could be mobile home land deals. Same thing we would buy as a note investor ourselves and put in our capital fund, we would loan against. Got it. Um, mm -hmm. So as long as we're comfortable with the collateral, I mean, if you came with a portfolio of notes against gas stations, I would say probably not. <laughs> um, but other than gas stations and probably churches, those are probably the two that we stay away from. So, yeah. okay. Well, and there's a, there's a question about, um, you know, and this, this is a pretty common thing. So hey, it's totally fine. I love that you guys are asking these questions. Sometimes when you get somebody who's been in this business for 30 and 40 years, they they know these terms so well that sometimes it's it's you get a little lost and so we talked about pledging if you're wondering what ltv was i saw that question it's just simply loan to value right what what they're doing is they're saying okay you, you've got this much of assets we want to loan a lower amount so that you can keep some of that cash flow as well right we don't want to get you out of business and take away your cash flow that's the beautiful part about this business is cash flow as eddie says can be forever Right. And so I love that piece. Um, there was another question on here uh, from Garen from California. How feasible is note investing in California? And I think that this is an insanely common question that we get. Right. And it's not just California. It's literally every state. Everybody wants to know. But can you do it here? Right. So, Eddie, why don't you talk us for, you know, as a guy who's bought notes in every state there is. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, California as well as other states and the feasibility of, of doing this business? Well, there is a California is a super active state as far as investors. Now, a lot of investors in California may buy in other states as right. well. We've trained a lot of people in note school as a lot as in a lot, right, Joe? Yes. People that are from California. And so, but they necessarily buy in their state as well as other places. So I would just say if, if, if you live in California, you may buy right in your backyard and then open up your mind as to what risk or what the possibilities are, even investing in other places as well. So uh, so I would say that. Uh, but but as far as California, can you do it? Is it legal and all that stuff? Of course, it's you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just I would just add to that a lot of times when. You know, people here in California immediately, they think Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego. But there, there's a lot of seller finance notes, you know, in other parts of California, right? Maybe Northern California, Inland California, you know, places that don't sell for $5,000 a square foot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some, some, some of those markets. So there's a lot of property. We see mobile home land deals, yeah. larger tracts of land in certain yeah. areas of California that people created notes on. And that are looking to we've sell had, those notes. We've had a student right here on this show. Seth Choate lives in Oakdale, yep. California, and he's a rock star note school student. And he's done the business right there in his backyard in, in uh, you know, northern central California. So, yeah. And and if, if I'm not mistaken, you actually bought a note on a property once owned by John Travolta. Is that correct? And that was in California. <laughs> Isn't that right? 
Yeah, that's a, I, I bought the note on the property that was surrounded his house. Okay. So there was an avocado ranch that surrounded his house and he lived in the middle and there was like a driveway going through the middle of it. He lived in the middle. And so that was back in about 1984. And uh, about a month ago, I was in a hotel. Bob and I were in a hotel in Florida at a, at a mastermind event. And lo and behold, here comes John Travolta walking by. Right. And I go, hey, John. Remember when you lived over there in Santa Barbara in the middle of the avocado ranch? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, I actually bought the note on that place. And then that conversation lasted for quite a little while. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And so obviously you can do them. And Garen, I will tell you another another thing. In fact, I, if you go to noteschool.com slash TV, I actually have a little presentation there. And I actually use... Um, some case studies in California, right? We'll actually kind of walk through how no creation can happen in any state in the, you know, in the country. Uh, and we'll help you on that journey so that you're a little bit more confident. Um, one other question that I want to go ahead and address before we wrap up is what, it, uh, with inflation on the rise, how does this impact notes? I'm thinking it's the same risk as a bond, but what am I missing? So Eddie, why don't you kind of walk mark us through what that looks like to be able to have a value of something. And the longer you're in this know what does your risk look like? Well, part of the business in, in doing it well is going to be understanding uh, various funding techniques. And there's they're going to be a hedge against inflation. So uh, I, uh, Marcus, I will tell you this. I started in this business in 1980. Okay. Interest rates were 21%. Right. Yeah. I, I would love for that day to come back because believe me, it was a bonanza beyond bonanzas in this business. Okay. So understand, but what I didn't know 20 years, when I was 20 years old are financing techniques to, to, to use to offset the risk of just pure inflation. So those are, I, I don't want to give you an evasive answer, Marcus, but those are techniques. This is what we teach in the training side is how do you do this in a way that like, oh, well, I'm worried about this. Well, okay. Is there a way to mitigate that risk? Exactly. And, and, and so from that, th that changes the game of the business. So great question. And uh, I am, I am very much uh, concerned about people knowing some, some, some protection techniques. So we don't find ourselves on the negative side of the market. Yeah, Amen. absolutely. 